Hi, everybody. My name is Darren Hood, a user experience professional from Southfield, Michigan in the USA. And I'll be talking to you today about the topic, the UX cycle of excellence. Let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? A little bit about me, because I like to get a little personal when we're doing these talks. Uh, so we're not just a talking head, but to allow you an opportunity to just be able to relate to me as just a human being, just as a an everyday guy. Uh, from a professional standpoint, I have over 26 years working in the field of user experience, what we now know as user experience, because of course, we didn't always call it this. But I designed my first website in 1995, continued to grow, fell in love with the discipline, and went into it part-time in 2002, and then full-time in 2005, been working in the field ever since. A little bit about me again personally, I have a master's, a UX-related master's degree from Syracuse University in Syracuse, New York. I have a UX master's degree from Kent State University, UX design specifically, where I also serve as a, an adjunct professor. been teaching there now for a little over five years. It's a picture of my beautiful wife, Angela, there in the middle. Uh, down lower left, we have uh, my wife and I love cats. That's one of our four cats, Rocky, who appeared in a local Humane Society calendar. That was a shot that was there of him. Uh, of course, photography, that's something else that I love to do. One of my favorite cameras there. I love bicycling. I actually lost 100 pounds once, and a great deal of it was due to bicycling. So that's that's close to my heart there. Uh, that's a picture of my first sanctioned 300 game in bowling. I, I am a former member of the Professional Bowlers Association, so I'm very proud of that. Uh, and you see the UXPA logo there as well as the World Usability Day logo uh, because I do speak all over the world at various events, conferences, things of that nature. And so I just have that there just to help represent who I am. I do have a global footprint. Uh, I am known around the world when it comes to user experience. And I absolutely love sharing and building people up. Part of the reason I'm here sharing with you on today. A little bit about my professional footprint. So yes, I've been doing the work for 26 years, but here's a small snapshot of some of the companies that I have been able to work for or provide support for with their initiatives. You likely will remember or, or, or recognize some of the logos that you see here, just to give you an idea of where I have worked over the course of my career. But let's go ahead and get into the actual content now. Enough about me. Let's get into the content. I've been doing the work for 26 years, and I'm sure that the people that are attending this conference have been engaged with regard to UX across, uh, I mean, just a, 26 years for me, 10 years, five years, seven years, eight years, two years, 15 years, whatever it is, there's a really broad range of people, I'm sure, that are represented from an experiential standpoint here at this, at this event. One thing that always crosses all of our minds, no matter who you are, no matter how long you've been doing the work, no matter what you've been able to accomplish, no matter what your educational background is, there are always these questions of what can I do to get better? Because we never stop growing. We always subscribe to lifelong learning. We're always advancing within the discipline of UX. So there's, the question always arises, how do I do this? People ask me all the time, Darren, how do I get better? What can I do? to get better at my craft? What can I do to become, uh, to develop higher levels of acumen and expertise? And the question came up so much. I just began to look back on, on my track record. I began to look back on my journey. I began to consider the journeys of other people, the things that people encountered, the various types of problems, design problems they had to solve over the years things that they had to go through within their environments. Some environments had a high level of UX maturity. Some did not. The question still remains the same. It, it, it all boils back down to us as individuals. What can I do better? What can you do better to get better at UX? What can we do to better represent the discipline that we enjoy so much? If you didn't enjoy it, you wouldn't be here. 
I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. So in answering that question, I began to, again, giving it thought about my journey, the journeys of others, feedback, data that I've been gathering for years from people that I've worked with, people that I've talked with all over the world. And I came up with this seven step process. And yeah, we could call it a process. I think that's, I think that's safe. And I call it the UX cycle of excellence. Seven steps. And it's a pretty quick talk, basically speaking. And I want to talk about each one of these seven steps. I'm going to sort of really expound a lot about the first two because the first two are very critical in that they are the foundational parts of achieving and maintaining excellence and providing us with a point of reference that allows us to, why I've used the word cycle, cycle through these things so that we can always make sure that we are at our absolute best when we do these things. So let's go through these seven steps. Again, I'm going to focus mostly on the first two from a standpoint of that's where I'm going to elaborate today, but all seven steps are important. Quick overview. Number one, properly define the discipline. Number two, embrace UX's foundational tenets. Number three, evaluate your current state. Number four, identify any knowledge and skill gaps that exist in your own professional level of practice. Step five, make sure that you build towards excellence. Number six, commit to personal maintenance. And then lastly, number seven, you've got to be patient with yourself. Now, these are the seven steps. Let's go over each one of them individually. Number one, again, we must, if we're going to achieve excellence in user experience, it is critical that we properly define the discipline, something that is a problem today, especially with massive amounts of misinformation that's being circulated and shared around the world of UX today. It must be properly defined. So I said, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on these first two steps, and I'll explain why after, after I cover them. So a little bit more about this. If we're going to properly define the discipline, let's make sure that there are some things we understand that UX is not or things that do not represent UX. Number one, UX's main concern is not aesthetics. A lot of people get into UX, and I'm sure a lot of us have had clients and stakeholders tell us and just want us to make something pretty. That's not what we do. That's not what we're about. So when people think, a practitioner, when we think or, or, or we are allowed to think that UX focuses mostly on aesthetics, we have not properly defined the discipline and when that mindset, as a practitioner, when we have that mindset, it is impossible to achieve excellence because we're entertaining misinformation. Cannot attain excellence when we hold fast to misinformation. Number two, this is probably one of the biggest ones that, that we see, UX is not UI. So when you see people say UX slash UI, or UI slash UX. I know a lot of people have it in your title. I had it in my title once. Never again, because I, I came to the knowledge that I understand that when we embrace the acronyms in that way, we imply that we think that they're interchangeable. They are not. We are telling people that UX and UI are the same thing. They are not. And as you're going to find out, Shortly, UI is actually a subset of UX, and it's a, not that large of a subset of UX either. It's, it's not the most important part of UX. It's the part where people engage with the work that we do, because without it, there's nothing for people to interact with. But when we make UX and UI interchangeable, it actually contributes to the spread of misinformation, and that creates a problem for us. We don't want to. We don't want to do that. Number three. UX is not just one thing. A lot of people think they say UX and, and they're referring to, in their mind, just a very small fraction of factors. 
that come into play with the work that we do, we need to understand, and I'll, I'll elaborate on this in a, in a little bit, but it's not just one thing, so we need to understand that. A lot of people say today that UX is a mindset, uh, and you're going to see today it's far from being a mindset. And, and in so doing, when people improperly define UX that way, they're oversimplifying what the discipline is. I, I guarantee you, if you have people who believe that UX is a mindset, sat side by side with me and did the work, uh, you would find out quickly that you are missing something. And we want people to be their absolute best, but it's not just a mindset. There's a lot, a lot, there's a lot of, of techniques. There's a lot of methods, methodologies. There are a lot of artifacts, deliverables. There are a lot of moving parts to UX. So when we think it's one thing or we think it's a mindset, and then we tell people that we're, not really helping them when it comes to UX. And UX is still young, so it's important, in, especially in contrast to a lot of the other disciplines that we collaborate with. We're the baby on the block, and we're the only one who everybody wants to do our job, and we're the only one or the main one, yeah, that people just don't understand. In order for us to be able to interact properly and to have a seat at the table, and not only a seat at the table, but a seat at the table that has appropriate impact, it's important for us to define discipline properly and then represent it the right way. UX is not design thinking. A, a lot of people have been presenting UX in that manner in recent years. A lot of people have even talked about design thinking and the way they talk about it. It's really UX, but they're branding it because they're sort of giving in to the politics of the day. But UX is not design thinking. Is there a way for design thinking to be a part of a UX operation? I have seen it. The problem is that UX, or not UX, but design thinking is designed and or described in so many different ways and defined in so many different ways that it creates an issue where 10 people can say design thinking and they're all saying something different which is a little different than what you're going to see in a moment about UX, there can be 50 different u definitions of UX and they actually all kind of work. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's not an issue because it is, it's so many things. We don't have to be identified by one definition. Design thinking, however, though, some people are using it to replace UX. And so if we think that UX and design thinking are the same thing, then we'll fall short, we'll misdefine, and that creates issues. Lastly, please know and understand, it's not so much of a what it is not, but just a principle that's not part of what we do. UX is not UX if it does not include insights from actual users. Uh, the What the users, uh, how they engage with the solutions that we are prescribing whether or not it allows them, the solutions we design allow them to quickly and easily achieve their goals. These are things that factor in to what we do. And when we find out that what we're doing, if it's not reflective of their mental models, if they have too many issues, if the cognitive load is too heavy, then UX, we realize that we have to iterate and we have to make changes. But if you just design something and there's no input from users whatsoever, Folks, it's not really UX. And so we need to know and understand this today. So just doing a little housekeeping, we need to make sure that when we're talking about UX and these things are part of what's being done, especially when it talks about users, because you got to watch how you talk to users. Also, some people feel that they talk to users and all they did was ask a user for their opinion. That That's not UX either. You just ask them for their opinion but it's not really UX. So we need to really work together to make sure that we're embracing the things that properly represent what we do and properly define what we do. Now, here's one of those 100 definitions that I, I can ride with this and I can ride with a lot of other ones too. We don't have to have one definition. There's a lot of ways to express what UX is and does, but they don't detract so as long as the definition doesn't detract, it's you'll find that it's something that we can work with. And this definition basically says, UX refers to the set of methods and techniques used to find the sweet spot, picture a Venn diagram, between user goals, 
business goals, and various types of constraints. That's what we do on a regular basis from a UX perspective. So we know, need to know and understand these things. So remember, number one is, if you want to achieve excellence, make sure you are properly defining the discipline. Don't embrace today's UX propaganda that's out there. It will just create problems for you, your users, your company, and your team, and your future in UX. Step two, embrace UX's foundational tenets. And people will say, well, Darren, what, what, what do you mean by that? Well, throughout the years, something that I've observed and I took note of and I began to document it. The foundational tenets of UX are really what I call the four pillars, heuristics and usability, information architecture, research and interaction and interface design. Remember when I said earlier that UX is not just one thing? All of these things that you see right now are all reflective of and representative of UX. And there are the pillars, and then there are sub-pillars that are all part of it. And so when we understand that these things help to make UX what it is, we start to uh, expand our horizons and we're in a better position, especially when we want to grow in these areas. Because as you look at these things, you go, wow, you know what? I could be better at research. Wow, I really don't know much about heuristics. You know what? Never learned about information architecture. You know what? I know about interface design. I told you. It's a subset. There it is. Subset. I know about interface design, but I really don't know anything about interaction design principles. When we become more well-rounded, when it comes to these pillars, we're embracing the foundational tenets of UX, and this is what makes us a more well-rounded, a, more, a better equipped UX professional, even if, say, for example, you're a researcher. Do you realize that the more you know about heuristics and usability, information architecture, and interaction and interface design, it will help you to be better at designing your research? It will help you to be better at analyzing and synthesizing the data from your research? So, and it's time. We need more generalists, folks. We need more genera generalists because we have a lot of people that are specializing, but they're specializing now, and they're coming in as specialists, but they don't know anything about UX as a whole. That, that limits your potential as a specialist. So keep that in mind. Not the topic today, but keep it in mind. If you want to be excellent, you're going to need to do that. So remember, embrace UX's foundational tenets. Next, evaluate your current state. Now, until you define UX properly and until you embrace the tenets, you will not be able to accurately identify your current state. Now, let me pause for a moment. I mentioned that I was going to put emphasis on the first two steps. And before I go any further, I need to mention the reason for that is that you'll find that when you define, properly define what UX is and you embrace the four tenets, you will eventually, when it comes to the rest of the cycle of excellence, you can spend the bulk of your time on steps three through seven because the foundation, steps one and two, are set. And so it makes it easier. You just do maintenance. You just update your information on steps one and two, but you'll spend most of your time after the fact on steps three through seven. So again, when you can properly define what UX is, and you embrace the tenets, the foundational tenets of user experience, then you want to look at yourself and see who are you? Where, where do you fall short? Where could you stand to grow? Where are you excelling? What do you understand the most? What do you not understand the most? What have you been using in your daily operation? What has been absent? And you begin to set your sights on those things. And that's really part of step four, a little bit of overlap between steps three and four. You need to identify any knowledge and skill gaps in your own person. Again, where do I lack? How, how good are you when it comes to usability? How skilled are you when it comes to heuristics? And there's something I call the personal heuristics repository. It's your own personal knowledge level with regard to any proven principles, best practices, common convention, 
How skilled are you? How knowledgeable are you about those things? That's what heuristics are made up of. Some people have a broad knowledge. Some people have a narrow knowledge. If you have a narrow knowledge of heuristics, you need it to grow. Now, it can grow through research because as you continue to prove things out, as you continue to develop things, as you continue to understand things, then your own personal heuristic repository continues to grow. But if you lack that skill, I've seen people before, I've done talks on heuristics in the past, and people got upset about it. And they said that that's not legitimate and we don't need that. But they felt that way because they lacked heuristics. And instead of saying, hey, I can stand to get better there, they started to kick and scream. Not a good look, especially when emotional intelligence, EQ, is extremely critical to success and excellence in user experience as well. And so we have to have a high level of self-awareness and we have to own our successes and we have to own our shortcomings too. But when we identify any knowledge and skill gaps that exist, just make a note, work on it. Everybody who's succeeding in UX today, we've all come to to -to face-to-face with something that we needed to get better at. We've all come face-to-face with something that we needed to learn, and we just learn it, and we get better. I couldn't talk like this. 15, 20 years ago about UX, but I grew into this. And and so can and will you if you ascribe to excellence. So gave the example of the heuristics, identify any knowledge and skill gaps, be courageous, and be ready to go forward. Next, build towards excellence. And you can see the overlap. Again, you have to be committed. You want to make sure that you are actively engaging to make yourselves better. Actively engage to be better. And when you actively engage to be better, you're always going to improve. Get some great books. Go to great events. Look at content. Tap into content that will help to build you, but it must be a deliberate and conscious effort. None of us grows by osmosis. You must put forth the excellence or the effort if you want to achieve excellence. Which takes us to seven, six. When you start building, don't build and give up. Don't get, imp- don't, don't get to the point where you're tired of doing the work. Don't wish for an easy street where you want things to just come to you without you making some type of an investment in time, effort, and energy. You must make a commitment, and that commitment is that I'm going to make sure that I'm constantly maintaining or engaging in maintenance with regard to who I am. I'm always going to examine myself to see where I can get better. I'm always going to examine myself to see how well I executed when it came to, to applying certain methods and methodologies and techniques associated with UX. I want to have lessons learned sessions with myself. Where can I get better? Where did I drop the ball? Where could I have done a better job of, of say, querying or probing with people during the, during the research process? Where could I have done a better job with that prototype that I put together? There are a lot of different things that we can do, but we need to make sure that personal maintenance, we are, each one of us, is responsible for making sure that we are, as individuals, the absolute best that we can be when it comes to the discipline. Are you ready to commit to that today? You have to commit to it. Nobody else can do this part for you. It's something that you have to do yourself. We can teach you things. We can give you things that you can do to help you get better. But the commitment to personal maintenance, that has to be done for you, by you. So make sure that you're ready to commit today. And then step seven, the last step, and it's funny that this is the last one, And I find it interesting because it's a struggle with everybody at some point in time. Most importantly, the thing that I've seen in in speaking with people around the world is that a lot of people just want everything so fast. They just want to microwave their own career trajectory. They want to 
They want to completely accelerate their growth. They want to learn UX in six months or three months. I've even seen people advertising that you can learn UX in seven days. You can't. I've been doing this for 26 years, and I'm still learning. And you will always be learning. But but with regard to step seven, you have to be patient with yourself. Take your time. Continue moving forward at all times. But don't get frustrated with yourself because you didn't accomplish something within what is probably an unrealistic time frame that you've ascribed to yourself. Please be patient with yourself. It's critical to healthy growth that you're patient. If you get impatient and you try to do things too fast, uh, you will end up regretting it. You might not regret it right away, but you'll regret it over time. So please, please, please be patient with yourself as you're growing. Uh, Again, 26 years, I still have to be patient with myself. When I see an opportunity to grow, I've got to be patient with that. You're not going to understand everything necessarily the first time you're exposed to it. You're not going to get everything right the first time that you do it. Be patient with yourself. Continue to do things the right way. Continue to iterate with yourself and watch yourself blossom. Got to be patient, though, to accomplish it. So, folks, those are the seven steps in the UX cycle of excellence. Again, step one, properly define the discipline, critically important. Embrace UX's foundational tenets. Evaluate your current state. Always know where you are when it comes to user experience and where you stand with regard to the discipline and your skill and acumen levels. Identify any knowledge and skill gaps that you have. And then step five, be ready to build. You identify, you build. You identify, you build. And I think it's probably apparent now, you see why, you can go through steps three through seven and you just continue to do that with only minor revisiting of steps one and two because once those foundations are laid, once those things are set, you only have to go back and just make sure that they're still sound. Step six, be committed. Commit to personal excellence. Be a person that's determined to be all you can be. There's nothing stopping you but you. Be all that you can be when it comes to user experience. And then again, step seven, make sure that you're patient with yourself. Don't rush yourself. Don't compare yourself with somebody else and you see them and it seems like they're getting somewhere really, really fast. That's going to run out eventually uh, because if you move too fast, UX is so, so, so granular it's so involved there's so many moving parts if you move too fast you're just going to miss something and you're going to and that thing you miss is going to be turned into an opportunity for you to have developed and you you will not have it so take your time it's worth it so again those are the seven steps so thank you for the opportunity to share with you on today thanks to the folks at the hx conference i'm really happy and excited to have been able to share with you today. So thank you for thinking of me and giving me this opportunity. For those of you interested in connecting with me, and I connect with and talk with people all over the world all the time, you might as well connect (laughs) and uh, follow me too if you choose to do so. Uh, You can find me, my podcast, The World of UX with Darren Hood, is available anywhere where podcasts can be found. I'm on Twitter under UX Uncensored and under Darren Hood. Uh, Most people connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm close to 10,000, if not already, at 10,000 connections out there. So feel free to connect with me out there. Uh, You can find me on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, the UX Uncensored YouTube channel, uh, available out there. And I'm constantly putting new recordings, planning on getting some new content. One of these days, I'm going to start rolling out some new and fresh content. And there's also an Instagram page for UX Uncensored, as well as for the World of UX podcast, and I even have a Facebook page. So feel free to connect with me via any of these resources. Uh, More than happy to chew the fat with you, to talk shop. Absolutely love talking to people from around the world and look forward to seeing and meeting you out in cyberspace. All right, folks, again, thanks for the opportunity. Have a good one and enjoy the remainder of the conference. Bye-bye now.